everyone. I'm Jody Fomer, Office Manager at Cruise Law Firm. Here today with me is Senior Managing Partner and Owner Mike Cruz, and we're here to ta- today to talk about uh, some certain issues um, surrounding, obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic. Today's topic is COVID-19 protocol for criminal cases in the Ontario Court of Justice. And Mike, one question I do have is, um, let's go back to when COVID first hit in March 2020. What was going on then with with criminal cases here in the Ontario Court of Justice? Wow, you know, it's been quite a ride since then, hasn't it been, Jody, for the criminal justice system? We've we've had so many changes. And you know, this podcast, we're going to talk about just an overview of what's gone on up to the present. Okay, sure. Yeah, so that's very interesting. You know, it was shocking what happened, of course, with COVID hitting. And oh, absolutely. About, about mid-March, they, they had to do, uh, in the Ontario Court of Justice or criminal courts, they had to figure out what they had to get our do. So they brought in protocols, which have evolved continually. Up mm-hmm. and then we get weekly updates, but mm-hmm. we've got a pattern now. It, it's pretty set what's going on. But Back then, they, they basically paused all criminal trials. No criminal trials went on mm-hmm. between about March 15th and July 6th. What did that mean? You had people sitting in jail, languishing uh, in their jail, waiting for their trial, waiting to be resolved. We had out-of-custody matters. Mm-hmm. Any first appearances or remand appearances in court, they were automatically, you didn't even have to attend, it was going over 10 weeks. Mm, we didn't have to call in, we didn't have to appear. No, no. And in the meantime, the ministry was modernized and they said, this is a disaster. We've got a cascading delay problem because you have a right to reasonable trial. People are missing their murder cases, their jury cases are all paused. Mm-hmm. And and what happened then was we brought in all this technology, uh, modernization, we brought in Zoom, we brought in judicial video network. We they were for for in custody people sitting in jail they were still getting their bail hearings and that was at that time i think done by video as well yeah it still is actually done virtually yeah. much of our courts gone to virtual now mm-hmm. you can even get a virtual trial now if you can believe that that's great you know so th- there was all these changes going on and they were trying to figure out what they did so they spent millions of dollars updating our technology throughout throughout the uh, spring and summer mm-hmm. now for non urgent matters like people out of custody mm-hmm. Uh, their trials were all paused too and went over. They could not even do their guilty pleas unless it was an urgent matter. Most matters out of custody are not urgent. I mean, you don't need to urgently plead guilty to a criminal case. There's some exceptions. In the summer, impaired driving was considered urgent because there was a 90-day limitation period to plead guilty to get ignition interlock. And what's happened with that that's been extended? Yeah, we talked about that in another video. It's been extended at 282 days, so that was a great thing. Okay, perfect. And... But the beauty of it is, even though the pandemic effect and pause the court system, the message that we were getting, trying to get out in our uh, videos and, and to clients, our clients, client people who called us, look, the court system may be paused, but you can still do the normal steps on your file. Even though your matter's gone over 10 weeks, mm-hmm. you can still do all the normal steps where you get your disclosure, you, you review it, analyze it, figure out your client instructions, meet with your client. So you, essentially we want to get the, the point across to our viewers is that things were rolling along like they normally would with regard to file um, production and, and, and a normal case file that we would have pre-COVID was also flowing as it should even though COVID was going on. Yeah, absolutely. So even though the case went over 10 weeks, it didn't really matter other than the fact you couldn't do your guilty plea, you couldn't set up a trial, but you could still get the case set in a position to set a trial date. So the administrative steps on a file were still being done properly. Absolutely. Yeah. So there was not much different in that way other than right. you can't have your trial, which is not good. And what our, our court system was brought into the 21st century. So the court slowly got got courtrooms renovated mm-hmm. they um as of july 6 they had uh 93 ontario court of justice courtrooms across the province rent rated mm-hmm. they had 53 renovated for superior court of justice as of that date now that's a small subset they're continuing to roll it out so trials resumed so the trials that they are prioritizing they wanted to anyone sitting in custody waiting two years for a trial we need to get their trial on right 
Mike, just one interruption here and just uh, a little two-second rewind. When you say renovated, for the viewer's purpose, um, by that you mean being retrofitted with plexiglass between witness stands and things like that, right, to, for protection? That's exactly it. The courtrooms were, um, there's a protocol now, mm-hmm. for the, if this is part of the pandemic protocol, where you have to either fill out a screening questionnaire before you enter or do it in advance, whether you're lawyers and public. They, they limit the number of people in the courtroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do the screening, you then go through security, Mm -hmm. you have to wear masks, there's social distancing. Each courtroom is set up differently now. Mm -hmm. There's plexiglass, there's limited seats, Mm -hmm. Um, there's plexiglass at the council table masking. The only time you're allowed to take off the mask is if you're testifying. The the lawyer's allowed to take off the mask if they're speaking. Otherwise, we have to be masked. There are some judges, and quite properly, that's up to them. They, they have required lawyers to be masked throughout the trial, which okay. might be a little awkward in my view, but it's been done. Mm-hmm. So it's been done very safely. I mean, the court system itself, I, I'm amazed. I mean, I'd rather be in a courtroom than a, than a, mm-hmm. a, a shopping center or, or drug, uh, uh, going grocery shopping. We all know I don't do much household. <laughs> I'm too busy practicing well, law. Lot, have you ever been in a grocery store? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I pre-COVID. I, you know, my my whole life is practicing law, basically, isn't it? Tyler? And the gym. Yeah, and, and working out is very stress important busting to me in the gym. Getting rid of my stress. So it's been a modernization process. It's been a slow rollout. We had a a, a bit of a problem develop because there's been a uh, delay problem which emerged, which I mm-hmm. covered in another video as well. So as a result of this, the Crowns were offering pretty good lenient deals to try and move the cases through the system. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you know, it, it's been, bear in mind, 95% of matters are guilty pleas, 90 to 95% of matters mm-hmm. are guilty pleas in the Ontario Court of Justice. So that those are the cases we need to focus <clears throat> on to try and move them through the system. Uh, it was a great time, it still is, to hire a lawyer with these deals due to the, you know, the, the protocols at the Crown. Mm-hmm. The Crown's got directives now essentially to exercise more leniency to, you know, get the cases through the system. You know, on that topic, it's really unfortunate because because of COVID, so many people have been laid off um, or even lost their jobs totally. Um, So therefore, obviously, you know, and then they get charged with an offense and they just don't have the means, unfortunately, to, you know, hire us or or anyone else for that matter. So... um, but sometimes, you know, if you can have a family member um, or even if your bank will give you a little loan, depending on the charge you're facing, you know, it is totally at this time, especially during the pandemic, um, worth to, to, try to, to try to do that to, to get a lawyer to get you the best outcome at this point in time that we're being able to get. There has never been a better time in the criminal justice system to get a more lenient sentence mm-hmm. on, on many criminal matters right now. And there's no question about that. And, and that's the message we, we've been getting out. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, it's, it's the, they brought the courtroom into the 21st century. That's a great thing. And they've set up, I mean, these protocols go on and on. If you go on the website, the Ontario Court of Justice website, it's going to make your head spin. It's very cumbersome, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, like our staff has had to memorize this, of course, the, the 50 or 100 pages that are on there. Mm-hmm. Each, each courthouse is a little different. But more important to that, each little courthouse that we operate in, which I'm sure it's over, oh God, I don't know how many cities we operate. We were all, we're all, all many, many parts of Ontario we operated. So many So our, all of our lawyers and staff who operate in these <clears throat> counties, we've had to memorize each protocol and know where to file things. There, there's now electronic filing. <laughs> there's now enhanced designations. Everything's being done electronically. So this is, can all be found on the website. I'm just giving a quick overview of things and how mm-hmm. each court operates. Now, what's going on since? Well, um, as of July 6th, we brought the trials back. They're slowly renovating more courtrooms. Mm-hmm. They're, we're, doing in, in, we're doing in-person trials now, which is very safe. I feel safe doing the trials, and all the lawyers do, and, and most of the bar does. I mean, I suppose if you have a pre-morbid condition or a comorbidity-type condition, it might, might be a little concerning, but I certainly feel safe in the system and, and all our lawyers and, and all my colleagues who I've spoken to with rare exceptions feel the same way in the bar. Um, this enhanced designation now, which is another protocol, this allows us to not even attend the first court, court appearance. It goes over automatically 12 weeks. We still do the normal steps. So the presumptive 10 week adjournment has been replaced by filing a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. 
and not having to attend and then going over automatically 12 weeks, doing the normal administrative steps to move a file. That's a great thing. I, I critique our old remand system as well. So Mike, what happens um, after, so say I'm charged and I have um, a first appearance on Monday, my lawyer <clears throat> has filed um, the enhanced designation. So on Monday, that automatically will go over for a period of 12 weeks. Yes. So here we move along and we we're up to the next, the second court appearance. Right. Um, and so at that point, um, are we, <clears throat> does a client have to um, do anything at that second appearance? No, the client doesn't have to attend the second appearance. And for most of our cases, before that 12 weeks or, or near it, we're either in a position, we've done all the steps in a file, including meeting with the Crown client, knowing where we're headed. We know whether we need to set a guilty plea date, hopefully the charge has been withdrawn, mm -hmm. or a trial date or preliminary hearing date. So it's been a wonderful thing in that designation, actually, it's replaced the old system that we had. Perfect. And the presumptive 10 weeks was kind of the same thing in a way, but we weren't, lawyers weren't getting on the record. So I really, I do like the enhanced estimation. I don't think it's perfect. I think it can be approved and I do critique that in, in another podcast. So, you know, it's, we're moving forward right now. We're doing trials. They're doing in custody trials. We're setting trial mm -hmm. dates now. Mm -hmm. We're moving the system forward, but here's the problem. There's still a backlog of cases. They're slowly setting trial dates. God knows when you're going to get <clears> the <throat> trial date. Now there's not a clear pattern. Delays might happen in the system, we don't know, and cases might get thrown out. So this is why they're offering leniency. But going forward, I think the ministry is doing a, a really good job of dealing with this. Modernization has been fantastic. And, and it, it's a, so it's, it's, but it's a very complicated protocol. I mean, I, I swear to God, mm -hmm. if you go on the, the website, it's probably going to take you three hours to figure it out. <laughs> and that's just a start. Now you have to memorize it to practice law. But we're getting it. Our staff's been wonderful. You guys have been doing a great job. Sam, you, Danielle, Jennifer, the, all of our lawyers. Uh, I'm doing okay, I hope myself. You're you doing guys all right. I'll <laughs> I give you a, yeah. a C plus. Yeah, so this is a, <clears throat> this is a great thing. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I can't say enough what, what the ministry's doing. I mean, I do have some criticisms, minor criticisms, but it's a learning curve for everyone. The well, bottom line is, you know, whether you're in this line of work or anything else, um, you know, some more than others, I mean... Um, it's a time to adapt with the changes that are going on around us. So, um, and it's continuous. It's always up, up, updating and whatever, and you have to stay on top of it. Um, but you can be rest assured here at Cruise Law, we're updating ourselves every day on every new different protocol that should come into play. Yeah, and, and you know, bottom line with the court system right now, in light of all these protocols and renovations, they're slowly getting up to full capacity. I expect at hopefully at some point by the end of 222, 221, every courthouse and every court room in the province will be completely renovated. And hopefully by that point, we have a vaccine to take care of all this, right? Yeah, hopefully. You go first. But all these changes, <laughs> you know what? They've been very positive. These are positive. These are things that needed to be brought to light um, that in our minds um, needed some attention to. They're kind of old school protocols and old school tactics and, you know, not for being said for like critiquing the ministry or the court system or anything like that. Like when we look at our own lives and our own things, I mean, th if COVID has taught us anything, it's to like take a step back and reevaluate what we're all doing um, in our daily lives and, and how can we change that. So, um, you know, everyone is, is, you know, that we deal with is doing a great, great job um, in, in trying to make this work for them amidst this pandemic. Yeah, it's, that's very well put, Jody. And you know what? <clears throat> it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, including myself, who've been practicing mm, law I, for, for one, do years. not like change. I and, don't. And the old dog was the court system on the Harry Court of Justice. Yep. That, and it's been brought kicking and screaming into the 21st century. You no, know, I and, believe we'll get there. And, oh, we are getting there. We're right there right now. We'll be right there with them. So no worries. Yeah. <clears throat> no, but the, the court system too has been brought to the 21st century. As yeah. a, and our law firm, really, all kidding aside, we've been using technology at a high level for years. So this is it's nothing new to us, really. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah, we're continuously learning. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
So anyway, <clears throat> thanks for joining me today, Jody. It was a real pleasure You're as welcome, always. You're welcome, Mike. And I, I just want to thank our viewership for joining this podcast. I hope Stay you learned something. Stay tuned for more. And, you know, if you really want to delve into this, I encourage you to, to read the, uh, the OCJ website, but it might quickly put you to sleep because they go on and <clears> on and on. But, but there's a lot of details. So for those of you charged with the fence, you can find the particular section that will apply to you on the Ontario Court of Justice website. Thanks for joining me today. And Jody. I really hope you enjoyed our podcast. We are absolutely committed to bringing you informative and interesting criminal and DUI content. If you're watching this on YouTube, I ask and encourage you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you happen to be an audio listener, please follow us and stay tuned for more great content. If you've been charged with a criminal offense or a DUI in Ontario, please call us or reach out to us online with the contact form found at cruiselaw.ca.